Welcome to this rapid revision video looking at individual genius, this time ancient Roman doctor Galen. Who was Galen? Galen was an ancient Roman doctor, but probably Greek by birth, who built on the ideas of Hippocrates and developed knowledge of his own. If you've not seen my rapid revision video on Hippocrates, you might want to look at that first. Early in Galen's career, he worked as a surgeon and doctor to gladiators, becoming knowledgeable about anatomy and increasingly fascinated by how the body worked through the treatment of the injuries that he witnessed. He also became a physician to important Romans, including several emperors, which has surely got to be the highest a doctor could climb at that time. He developed some innovative ideas. Some of these were correct, but others were wrong. Later insistence on not questioning his work resulted in progress being hindered, particularly by the medieval church and the Renaissance church, but eventually his ideas were overcome. But let's not forget, some of his ideas actually did work and they were correct. So Galen is important, not just because of how long his ideas were around, but because actually he got some things right as well. So what were his new ideas? Well, some of them he had kind of refined rather than coming up from, from scratch. We can see here a diagram showing the theory of the four humours, which again, I've got another video on if you're unfamiliar with the idea. But he continued to use the theory of the four humours, but also continued to use clinical observation and diagnosis, something that had been used by Hippocrates. The theory of opposites, though, was based upon the work of Hippocrates, but a refinement by Galen, so very much more a new idea. Here's what he wrote. We must use opposites to balance up the humours and treat illness. If a man has a cold and is sneezing and coughing up phlegm, we must treat him with the opposite, give him fiery pepper or chilli. He used dissection and vivisection on apes and pigs to make discoveries. Human dissection was not allowed under Roman law, which led Galen to make some incorrect assumptions about the body, some of which we'll come back to in a moment. What he had basically done is he had observed certain things in apes or pigs or other animals and assumed that the same must be true to humans, and it often wasn't. However, one thing that he did manage is that he proved that the brain controls the body, not the heart. Another quote from Galen. From my work at Alexandria, I know about the body. Let me demonstrate on this pig. And we'll have a look at his pig demonstration in a moment. He also came up with this incredibly important idea. Perfect design. Every organ in the body has a special role to play. It is as if the gods designed them all to fit together perfectly. This was an idea that was very popular with the Christian church. Although Galen himself would not have been a Christian, the church liked the idea of his explanation that the body had been perfectly designed by a greater power. Not only that, he identified that the heart worked to pump blood around the body, but he didn't get that entirely right. He theorised that the blood was produced by the liver and used up like a fuel in the body, which is of course incorrect. I mentioned earlier the pig dissection. This is what he used to demonstrate that the brain controls the body through the nerves. Let's have a deeper dive into this and see what it involved. Here's a later engraving from the Renaissance period showing Galen performing the pig dissection by which he demonstrated the idea that the brain controls the body. So Galen theorised that the brain and not the heart controlled the body and set out to prove this. Here's how he did it. During his time treating gladiators wounds, he had noticed how some wounds were paralysing. Galen gathered witnesses and demonstrated that cutting a pig caused it to squeal in pain. I imagine it did. Cutting specific nerves on the pig, though, caused various types of paralysis. Galen then cut the nerve controlling the pig's squeal. The pig was still writhing in agony, the poor thing, but it no longer squealed, showing that the brain controlled the body through the nerves. There goes the squeal. But it is important to recognise that even with these scientific approaches, he didn't get everything right. Galen believed that the blood was used up like a fuel in a fire, not circulated, and he believed that it was created in the liver. He also thought that the jawbone was in two parts, like in many animals, including pigs, not one. Galen was not allowed to dissect humans, though, remember, and these mistakes lasted for centuries. Medieval doctors weren't even allowed to correct Galen, and it was only in the Renaissance period that this finally started to be challenged. And therefore, you've got the ridiculous situation where some things which were provably false had to be adhered to for fear of the, the power of the church and academics at the time. So what was Galen's importance? Galen took the best ideas of the Greeks and the Romans and made them better. He wrote over 60 books, and for the next 1,500 years, people still followed his ideas, 
Nobody dared to disagree with him. The Christian church particularly favoured Galen's work. His idea of perfect design reflected the Christian belief in God's creation. However, this reluctance to accept Galen's several mistakes, including very obvious ones, slowed medical progress in the medieval period. Some final points then. Galen was an ancient Roman doctor. He built upon many of the ideas of Hippocrates, but he also introduced several innovations of his own, the theory of opposites, knowledge of anatomy, and the idea of perfect design. He used vivisection and dissection of animals to demonstrate his ideas and to make discoveries. However, his reliance on animals led to many mistakes and assumptions which would not be corrected for centuries. However, he correctly identified the heart as a pump for the blood, but he incorrectly assumed that the liver created blood, which was used like a fuel. The medieval church promoted his ideas as they fit in with their own ideas about creation, but they also suppressed ideas that challenged Galen until the Renaissance, and people like Andreas Vesalius, who I'll do a video on another time. But for now, that's the end of this rapid revision video. I hope it's been useful to you, and if it has, please drop this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. But for now, thanks very much for watching, and good luck with your studies. Good health.